What's up guys? I figured out how to make pop-up headlights for S13 work without all the OEM chassis harness parts. Before I show you how to do it, let me just show you how it works. So this is the whole setup. We got our switch here. Right now it is down. Let's pop it up. Pop down. And if you want to do like the sleepy eye thing and stop it, it's literally being ran off this battery, two relays, and this double pull, double throw switch. So before I show you guys how to do this, this is not for beginners. This is kind of like intermediate. It's not super hard, but it's definitely not something I would suggest a beginner tackle. I still have to do this to the other headlights. So I'll be doing that in this video, and then we'll have them both set up on the table, and we'll run them both up and down with a switch. I'll have links to the switch and the relays in the description. You guys can pick them up for yourselves. So let me just explain how it all works before we get into the actual wiring and what you need to do. Basically, all it's doing is it's getting positive negative from the battery that's going to the relays and the switch. The switch is on the negative side because there's no amperage on the negative side. So the purpose of these two relays are to change the polarity of the wires going to the motor. And to get the motor to work, it has two wires, positive negative. So you connect positive negative to battery positive negative, and then it spins in one direction. And then you swap the wires and put positive negative backwards and it spins the other direction and that's how you get up and down so all the relays do is change the polarity for the motor all the switch does is it grounds out the relays causing them to change polarity but the switch has to be wired in with the limit switches because the limit switches tell the motor when to stop spinning so that's how you get it to where you go pop up and it stops on its own and go down and it stops on its own so that's how it all works it's kind of complicated but it's not really once you like start getting into it just go one piece at a time so i still have to do this to the other head light so let's do that right now also before we get into it i just want to say that i am not that great at soldering i have very 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 little experience with it so it is what it is we still make it work so first thing we got to do is take this cover off So now that we have the cover off, we can see the board. So what we're gonna have to do is take this screw out. But before we do that, these two wires here, this blue and black, are the motor wires. So we're going to heat up the solder and remove these wires from the board. So now we have the motor wires off the board. So we can just take that little screw out there and then take the board out. And we have to remove this little relay from the board. So you might have to fight with this part here. They have it like silicone or something on there to hold it up there and I guess to seal it. So we probably have to fight with that. But once you get that off, we have to take this relay off and all of these wires we're gonna remove. So we got our wires in on the board where they need to be. I'll go over that in a second. But what you need to know in order to understand why they're going to where they are, you have to take a look at this. This wheel spins as the motor turns and that's connected to the part that makes it go up and down. So if you notice, this part is all copper and this other part is all copper. So there's two rings and there's these black sections that aren't copper. So these four tabs right here are touching this copper as it's spinning. What's that doing is keeping the circuit closed between two of them are allowing the circuit to still be complete and once it gets to one of these black sections it opens the circuit and tells the motor when to stop this inner ring is for when it's closed and this outer ring is for when it's fully open so the way that we have this set up is our blacks are for the open and the whites are for the close so if we take a look at the board we've got one white wire going here and that goes down and connects to here which is this bottom tab this other white wire goes up to here and that goes down to here and that is this tab here at the very end we have one black wire going here which is connected to this one here which is the second tab up right here and the last black one is connected here which is this very first one so right now i'll put on screen which wire goes where so you guys know where to wire it So now that we have that taken care of, we need to extend these two motor wires. So we're just going to keep them the same color, we'll get blue and black, and then we'll just extend the wires. So we've got everything closed up, we've got our two motor wires, and then our four wires for limit switches. So now we can hook this up with the other headlight and we can make sure that it's working. Okay, so I got them both set up. 
so it works all we have to do is transfer this to a car which we will do in the future but it's not going to be my 240 i'm doing this for a friend yeah i kind of wanted a little bit of a challenge to see if i could get these pop-up headlights to function the way they should oem the only issue is he's going to have to pop them up and then turn the lights on after which i mean isn't the end of the world but because we're bypassing all the oem stuff i don't believe that the stock switch will also turn the headlights up i think we'll just be able to have them turn them on and off but now let me walk you through all the wiring once you get the actual motors set up so here's the wiring for the headlight motors we're going to go over the relays first the relays are labeled on the bottom side so you'll know which pin is which when we're referring to this chart so we label them relay one and relay two on relay one pin number 85 is going to the down limit switch which is this guy right here so this is relay one for me, and that's going to this side of the down limit switch. 86, 87 is going to be 12 volt positive. We've got our 86 and 87 right here going to the battery 12 volt positive, and that is the same on both. 87A for both of them is ground or 12 volt negative so that's what we've got for this one in my case it's a red wire which is going to the negative side r85 on relay 2 is going to the up limit switch which is this in my case it's a black wire we've got to go into the black wire which is our up limit switch wire and for the limit switches only have this on one side so you're not connecting both headlights you're just doing this on one in my case i'm putting that all on the us spec driver side and pin number 30 for both we're going to have relay 1 is going to the motor black wire and relay 2 we're going to have the motor blue wire and that's going to be for both motors so both motor wires from each headlight are going to go to those now if we look at the wiring for the switch which this is called double pole double throw switch because there are two sets of three terminals basically common and two normally opens and the switch closes the circuit when you go because it's a three position switch and that's laid out like this so we've got 1a going to the up limit switch for both headlights so that's this one down here we've got this one going to both limit switches on both headlights right here 2a is 12 volt ground or 12 volt negative and 2b is also 12 volt negative so we have a jumper going from 2b to 2a 3a is going to be our down limit switch for both headlights they're going to go to 3a so that's this guy right here one side of the whites from each going to 1a and these and we have one side of the down limit switch is going to 3a now for the passenger side 1b the up limit switch on here the other wire for the up limit switch is going to go to 1b which is right here for me then we got the ground which is looped together like i showed you and for 3b the other wire for the down limit switch is going to be going to there the wiring for it it is kind of complicated but at the same time kind of not complicated but that is how we get them to work and because this switch is a three position switch in the center it's providing no power to the motors so if you wanted to stop it wherever you can like how we have it fully open now let's close it just a bit and we can get kind of like a sleepy eye effect we do that or we can just close it all the way. You might have to play with this bracket that goes on the motor because it can go on in so many different ways. You want to get them pretty much even and that'll have the limit switches stop at the same point. So you're probably going to have to play with that when it's on the car and make sure that you get it where you want it. And that is how you get the OEM S13 headlights to pop up still without using all of the unnecessary OEM stuff. This is particularly useful if you have a shell and you still want the pop-up headlights. Uh, that's the case of my friend who I'm actually doing this for. He bought a shell and it doesn't have a chassis harness so we got the pop-up headlights to still function. Uh, even though it's slightly different from stock because it's going to be a separate switch you have to press and then turn the headlights on. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like if you did. There was a lot of work put into this video and you guys can leave a comment as well. Let me know what other stuff you guys want to see as far as like 240 wiring stuff. We can figure something out. Check out the video where we did our manual to power window conversion. That's probably pretty helpful for a lot of people who want power windows but theirs came with manual windows such as my s13 but anyways hit that subscribe button and i'll see you guys next time peace